certainly appreciate you, good Lord, this evening. The presence of your spirit, the great power of God is among us today. Thank God. I believe they said that uh, some of our visitors related to Brother and Sister Spurlock. We're glad to have you with us this evening. Uh, all these older Down here when I was just a little baby. Yeah. I was a kid. Been on 50 years since I've been in here. Right? Yeah. We're glad to have you with us tonight. Yeah. Yeah. We're glad that business is moving among the people. I want to read you a couple of places for the help of the Lord. In the fifth chapter of 2 Kings, it reads this way. Now Naaman, captain of the host of the king of Syria, was a great man with his master and honorable, because by him the Lord had given deliverance unto Syria. He was also a mighty man in valor, but he was a leper. And the Syrians had gone out by companies and brought away captives out of the land of Israel, a little maiden. And she waited on Naaman's wife. And she said unto her mistress, Would God, my Lord, were with the prophet that is in Samaria, for he would recover him of his leprosy. And one went in and told his Lord, saying, Thus and thus said the maiden that is of the land of Israel. And the king of Syria said, Go to, go, and I will send a letter unto the king of Israel. And he departed and took with him ten talents of silver and six thousand pieces of gold and ten changes of raiment. And he brought the letter to the king of Israel, saying, Now when this letter is coming to thee, behold, I have therewith sent Naaman my servant to thee, that thou mayest recover him of his leprosy. It came to pass when the king of Israel had read the letter, that he rent his clothes and said, Am I God to kill and to make alive? that this man doth send unto me to recover a man of his leprosy? Wherefore, consider, I pray you, and see how he seeketh a quarrel against me. And it was so when Elisha, the man of God, had heard that the king of Israel had rent his clothes, that he said unto the king, saying, Wherefore hast thou rent thy clothes? Let him come now to me. He shall know that there is a prophet in Israel. So Naaman came with his horses and his chariot and stood at the door of the house of Elisha. And Elisha sent a messenger unto him, saying, Go and wash in Jordan seven times, and thy flesh shall come again to thee, and thou shalt be clean. But Naaman was wroth and went away and said, Behold, I thought he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and strike his hand over the place and recover the leper. Are not Abana and Parfar, rivers of Damascus, better than all the waters of Israel? May I not wash in them and be clean? So he turned and went away in a rage. And his servants came near and spake unto him and said, My father, if the prophet had bid thee do some great thing, wouldst thou not have done it? Now much rather then, when he saith to thee, Wash, and be clean. Then he went down and dipped himself seven times in Jordan, according to the saying of the man of God. And his flesh came again like unto the flesh of a little child, and he was clean. Amen. 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 I thought how the man was in need of healing. He needed the Lord to help him. Uh, be quite honest with you, uh, his gods couldn't help him. But how that he was willing to go all the way out of Syria all the way down to Israel looking for the help, the healing that he needed. And I read to you that the king began to get kind of upset a little bit. He felt like the other king just wanted to seek a purpose, a reason to make war with him. But the man of God, Elisha, who talked with God and walked with God, 
I believe in we that know the Lord, know the Spirit of the Lord moved upon him and gave instruction to let him come to me. That he'll know that there's a prophet in Israel. Amen. Praise the Lord. Sometimes people will ask you about prophecy. They'll ask you about prophets. And they'll talk about what great prophets that there are. Prophets, prophetesses. I want to tell you this evening that there is a prophet still abiding among the holiness people. If you were to ask me who my favorite prophet is, I'd say the Holy Ghost. Amen. And are we glad tonight that the Holy Ghost still abides Amen. among the people of God? Amen. Yeah, man. And they begin to sing, hold to the unchanging hand of God. I begin to think back the years gone by, the things that God has done, the way God has brought miracles. Not just in the days of the Bible. I know that people teach that there are things that was just for the time of the disciples and just for the time of the apostles. But in my lifetime, I've seen the great and mighty works of God in the Holy Ghost move. I've seen the sick healed. I've seen the dead raised. I've seen miracles wrought in the power of God. Amen. I told hell that he began to come down and Elisha did not even go out and talk to him. He sent his servant to him. And Naaman began to get upset. And he said the same thing that gets a lot of us in trouble. He said, I thought. I thought. That he would surely come to me and stand. And, uh, that he would call on the name. And listen to what he said. That he would call on the name of the Lord, his God. There are a lot of people looking for help from the Lord our God. Yeah. Kind of sad if I had to say I'm depending on somebody to call on the Lord their God. You may be able to change God's. If my God could move, I'd want another God. Yeah. If my God had no power, I'd want another God in my heart. Amen. Praise Amen. the Lord. Amen. I thought that's what gets us in trouble a whole lot of times. You think this, I think that. What does God want to do? Amen. God didn't want to move the way He wanted. Amen. No. He did what God wanted to do. He wanted to put him to the test. Amen. He said, come and out and stand and waving his hands over and calling on the name of the Lord. He said, you go down and uh, you wash in Jordan seven times. Could God have healed him the first time? Amen. Could He have healed him the second? Amen. Third? Fourth? Fifth? He could have. But God said do it seven times. Amen. Now because God said do it seven times, would God have healed him one time? No. Two? Six times would God heal me? He had to go over that seventh time and watch himself. Praise the Lord. As I stood here, the Holy Ghost began to move on me. I thought, see, Sister Gail doesn't know what, what the battle that I was having and, and what I was going through at the time. As I stood here and the Holy Ghost moving on me, I began to speak in my heart and I said, Lord, you told me to trust you. And I'm standing here tonight trying to trust you. You believe the Lord heard me? I know He heard me. But He just came to me and He just told me to hell that He would not fail me. That He had come to His children, His little ones. Praise the Lord. And that good time God began to move among us. I was reminded of the word that the Lord had. Yeah, I'm going to go back to that as often as the Spirit would lead me. And the Lord said, I will set my anointing among my little ones. And I looked tonight and I saw the anointing of God begin to come down and get among His little ones. Look up tonight, children. We're on the losing side. We're on the winning side. We have the Lord our God we can go to. We have a God, a holy God, a clean God, sanctified. And He said, I will be sanctified in them that draw nigh unto me. And I've got some advice for you. This man got upset. 
The Bible said he went away in a rage. Well, then he was throwing a fit. He was acting kind of juvenile. He was angry because he didn't get what he wanted the way he wanted. And then he began to say, well, there's better rivers. In other words, there are mightier rivers, clean rivers. They're much better than this. Praise the Lord. But I thought whatever God wants to use, Amen. that's what we need. Amen. Sometimes God will want to do something a whole lot more simple than what you and I have laid out. I'm telling you, God didn't even need the Jordan River. But God wanted to make a, an example and show this man that, that my prophets have power. That when my prophets obey me, and you do what I tell you to do, I have the power to heal even leprosy itself. Leprosy was a death sentence. Unless the Lord would heal you, you slowly fall apart. I've got some advice for you. And you're going to find it in the second chapter of the Gospel of John. The Bible said the third day there was a marriage in Cana of Galilee. And the mother of Jesus was there. Mary was there. And both Jesus was called and His disciples to the marriage. They, ironically, somebody invited Him to the marriage stuff. And when they wanted wine, the mother of Jesus saith unto him, They have no wine. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, what have I to do with thee? My hour is not yet come. His mother saith unto the servants, Whatsoever he telleth you unto you, do it. I begin to think about Mary. How as a, a young a, a girl, the angel of the Lord came to her and told her how highly favored that she was uh, among all women. And how that, that through her, God was going to fulfill His promise and bring His Son into this world. And even as far as to tell him what to tell her what to name him. Because he said, For he shall save his people from their sins. Amen. Thank you, Lord. And began to tell me the thing that her child was going to do. And how that even her heart would be pierced through with many sorrows. She was not only going to have the honor of bringing him in the best of bringing him in this world, but she also, you, you mamas and, and daddies know, when your children suffer, you suffer with them. Mm -hmm. When they hurt, you hurt. When people do them wrong, it hurts your family. It hurts your heart. Amen. Amen. The Bible said she pondered these things in her heart. Yeah. But there had to be something about that little baby. That people debated whether or not, even now they, they would debate whether or not he was born of a virgin. But in all the world, there was one person that knew beyond the shadow of a doubt that he was the Son of God. Amen. And that was his mother. Amen. Mary knew where he came from. Amen. Yes. She knew when the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Ghost, overshadowed her. Amen. <laughs> Of all the doubt and in all the debate, this girl knew who he was. Amen. Praise the Lord. She watched him grow. She, she raised him. She and Joseph, they raised him. Watched him grow and no doubt saw things that are not recorded in the Word of God, but she saw things through that child. Amen. She had to. It came to the point. You remember the word of God when the Bible said they went to Jerusalem and they departed and went a few days journey away and Jesus wasn't with them. Yeah. They realized that he wasn't with them. You ever lose your child in the store? Come on, God forbid you ever lose one. Yeah. But the fear that got upon her heart, both their hearts, I mean both of them was, was a fear. Yeah. Yeah. And they went back and they found him. Where did they find him? 
he was teaching. He was teaching the doctors. He was teaching the, 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 the experts in the law of God. They were astonished that this boy knew so much about the Word. Yeah. But what they didn't understand is he was the Word. Amen. That's why he knew the Word, because he was the Word. Mama went and looked and they began to kind of rebuke him about what he had done to them. And he looked at her and he said, No, you're not that I must be about my father's business. Mary knew exactly what he was talking about because she knew who his father was. Praise the Lord. Other folks would read it and say, Well, who carpentry? No, she knew exactly because she knew who it was. Amen. He said, I must be about my father's business. She knew. Amen. He was talking about his father. Amen. Praise the Lord. God bless you. We don't know what all the things Jesus did as a child. We don't know. No. But I do know one thing. He must have done some miracles. Yeah. Why? Because Mary comes to him and says, They have no wine. And he said, Woman, what have I to do? What business is this of mine? I'm about my father's business. But mother, what do you want me to do? And in that moment, she turns and she looks at those servants. This is how I know that she saw things done in his life. She turned to those servants. She says, said, whatsoever he tells you to do, you do it. She knew you mamas know you boys, don't you? You know your children, don't you? You know their ways. And if you have five or six, they have five or six different little people and they all have their own little ways. But no doubt she knew that the things that Jesus would do were sometimes His thoughts were not like our thoughts. That sometimes His ways were not like our ways. And when we would go to do things one way, why Jesus had a special way of coming about and doing what needed to be done. She knew that the next words out of His mouth might have been confusing to somebody. That they wouldn't understand why to do what He's going to say. So she went ahead and cut it off and said whatever He tells you. Do. I've stood here this evening. I began to come back to my heart. The Holy Ghost was here. He's still here. He's not going away. He abides in my heart. He's still here. How important that it is sometimes that we get our heart and our mind to the place that whatsoever the Lord tells us to do, we do that. I've stood here. How God just wash it over me. I can't explain to you. You have to feel it for yourself to know how I feel. And I got to the place. Let me give you some advice, children. If the Lord does not tell you what to do, yeah, don't do anything. Stand and praise Him. Honor Him. Worship Him. But until you have that instruction what to do, you're not obligated to do a thing but worship Him. And I stood... I could feel I'm going to pull me down to the floor. And I got to the place I couldn't hear nothing on structure there. I said, Lord, whatever you want me to do, I'll do it. Whatever you tell me to do, I'll do that. You want the Holy Ghost? Praise the Lord. Do whatever this man tells you to do. Amen. You want healing in your body? Do whatever He tells you to do. You do it. Amen. You obey Him. There's something greater than all the sacrifices that you can give to God. And that is to obey God. Praise the Lord. God is pleased in that moment that we obey Him. Why? Because we acknowledge His realness. We acknowledge His authority. And we acknowledge that we trust Him when we yield ourselves over to do that that God has instructed us to do. We have that faith and faith pleases God. Without faith it is impossible to please Him. When He bids us to do something He'll never have you do anything indecent. No. He'll never have you move in a way that's out of order. Right. Amen. Everything that the Spirit of the Lord guides us to do is done just right. But if we want to get victory with God, we can't worry 
about who's watching. We can't worry about who's going to think about what we're doing. We can't worry about what the story might be told after church. In that moment when the Spirit of the Lord is moving upon us, we have to pray ahead of time that we will have an ear to hear what the Spirit would say to us. And then when He moves and speaks, it's up to us in that moment to obey Him. To obey Him. Praise the Lord. Glory God, whatever that He tells you to do, you do it. Hallelujah. Glory to God. It would be easy, Gail, just to be quiet. And not mind that it was moving. And then went home and paid the price for it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The Lord doesn't move like you and I think. He doesn't do things the way you and I think He's going to do it. Praise the Lord. I read in one place where the blind man came to Him. He wanted to be healed. Jesus could have spoke the words and it had been done. But the Spirit led Him to spit in the earth to make some clay. Amen. And rub it into my man's eyes. Amen. And he told him, go wash in the pool of some water, yeah. which means sin. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Yeah. Glory to God. Wouldn't you like to be sent? Yes. Whatever you go to do, wouldn't you like the Lord to have sent you to that place to do it? Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't know how many might have been washing that day. I don't know. Somebody might have had animals drinking out of it. It wouldn't matter if you're the blind man with clay in your eyes. It wouldn't matter. No, you'd have got right down with the camel or whatever else might have been there. You'd have stuck your head in the wall. Awesome, awesome. If you had believed and needed a healing from God, when you need something from God great enough, you don't worry about looking foolish. You don't worry about somebody saying something along the way. If you're the blind man, you're going to watch. Longer yeah. again. Whatever he tells you to do, go do it. Amen. I don't always move like we think he should. He doesn't always do what we think he ought to do. He's God. He does what he wants to do. He moves. He's, he is the master. We are the servant. We serve him. He's not a genie in a bottle. We don't just wish if God grant wishes. But if I could find mercy before God, yeah. if I could touch that mercy seat yeah. and have that great God look upon me, yeah. I could get the healing that I need, uh, the victory that I need, the power that I need. Amen. It all comes from Him. Whatever you tell you to do, you do that. Spencer did it through the walking around here. Yes, you can do more of that if you just yes. praise the Lord. Yes. Praise the Lord. It edified. It edified. It edified. It edified. It touched somebody. Yes. God don't move in funny spirits. No, he doesn't move in awkward things. No. Praise the Lord that God moves and when the Holy Ghost moves, it edifies. Amen. It goes out and it, He accomplishes that that God sees. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Whatever that He tells you to do, do it. Don't, don't try to measure it out. Don't try to weigh it out. Don't try to discern the Lord when the world can discern the Holy Ghost. Who can fully understand and comprehend the depths of God? Nobody. No one. There's no one that fully knows the depths. Well, if we get all, if we could just make it over to the other side, at the end of all of this, when all of this is behind us, then all these things will be made known. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. The Lord will move in simple ways. I said God will move in simple ways. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I wish Sister Brenda was with us tonight. Sister Brenda Kelly. She could tell you about her brother that he got locked job when he was little. Yeah. And how, praise the Lord, that they, you know, they, there's nothing they could do. But she, I remember the time she talked about her mom being in the kitchen. I believe she was fixing beans. And how she'd been fasting and seeking the Lord, wanting God to touch her boy. Praise the Lord. 
What she got didn't come in a needle, it didn't come in a castle. She could tell it better than I can, and I won't be careful, I don't want to take it the wrong way. But I believe she, she felt like maybe where she'd be going, maybe have the Lord bid her just to sip that, that juice off that soup. And see, when she did that, she heard a <laughs> and that jaw popped loose, and God healed her boy. Oh. You believe that? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Praise the Lord, I believe it. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God. Amen. I believe. I believe it. You believe that? Yeah, come on, Brother. I believe it. Not hard for me to believe. God will move. God will move. You know what? You're supposed to be dead. Yeah. Huh? Right. When you're down in the altar praying, they took the way it was told. Down in the altar praying, cancer went in the kidneys. Cancer in the kidneys. Down in the altar. Yeah, 21 year old. 21 year old. Supposed to be going a long time ago. But he got down in the other one that praying. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. 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 i Church at the time, Sister Hicks and over in a little trailer over there, 
And when I got up that morning, the Holy Ghost spoke to me. Say whatever you want to. He spoke to my heart. He said, get Floyd and go see Sister Hicks. And when the Lord speaks to me and tells me to go, I'm going to go. So I come down and I got him and we went home. Remember how it used to be sitting there? We kind of said the same way. A little recline like this. All the way back that way. Yeah. I thought we'd come in. And Floyd got on one side. I got kind of on this other side. And we began to pray. Yeah. And when we got done praying, I watched Sister Hicks and had been so sick. Yeah. She began to kind of look around the room. Amen. She looked way over the queen house, but then she looked over the couch. She looked around like, oh, what is she doing? You know what she said? She said, where did that third man go? Yeah, so. Where did that third man go? I said, what did you say? She said, where did that third man go? There's a man that was with me. She said, where did that third man go? She said, that other man that came and stood by my side and put his hand on my arm and said, I'll never leave you and I'll never leave you. Lord. 
and there's nothing wrong with that. No, no, no. But would you rather trust? Yeah. Uh, yeah. They got to church that night, and the people gathered, and they prayed, and they prayed, and they prayed. When he go to walk, he got a broke foot, broke bone, and they didn't know fake, and it, it kind of limped a little bit. When they got done, he went back over, sat back with my hands. And I thought the service kind of continued. And a, a brother kind of sat there for a little bit while they were singing. And he eased up real quiet and real peaceful. And he went and he sat down beside him. And when he sat down beside him, he didn't do it no very big way. But he just eased his hand over his leg. And he started praying. While he started praying, that love of God began to come to the church. Oh, when charity comes again, yeah, come on, brother. Yeah. Something great is about to happen. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That brother said, Turn it again. Put his hand up. I was here. I saw it when it happened. He got up just a moment. He stood. He kind of went a little bit. So then he started making his way. And at the time he got that over here, pop, whatever was wrong with the bone. Way back in. Come on, brother. Then he started walking this normal. Then he started running around. Where are Come on, man. Then he started shouting. And the power of God healed him that way. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. Come on, brother. God can do anything. Anything. Anything that needs to be done. Nothing. We wring our hands. We lay awake at night and we worry and we weep and we cry and we mourn, but God sits upon that throne unmovable and unshakable. Looking into the future, looking into yesterday, today, and tomorrow, seeing it all open before Him, and He fears none of it. Mary, she knew her, her son. Whatever He takes you to do, you do it. No matter how crazy it is, it's the same, right? You do it. Well, they needed some wine. You and I might have wanted to go to the market and get some. The Bible said that there were six pots of stone that, that were sitting there. And uh, Jesus told them, said, fill the pots with water. Yeah. See, Jesus didn't need to send to the market to get something. No, no. He'll work with what he's got. Yeah, he didn't need wine. Right. Oh. There's six vessels right there that would, he could use. Oh, man. He didn't need wine. He had some water. Right. The Lord would use what he's got. Yeah. Fill them up with water. The Bible said they filled them to the brim. Yeah. They didn't just like the Lord that when he moves to fill you up. Come on, good Jesus. He do halfway blesses. Oh, he fills us to the Praise the Lord. And when they got them all filled up, he said, bear them out. Take them out. Draw them out and take it to the governor of the feast. Unless Mary had left, she knew that there was water poured in there. Jesus knew it was water that had been put in there. And those servants knew what they were drawing out with the water that they put in there. Yeah. <clears throat> Somewhere between the filling station and the governor of the feast, yes. the water <laughs> began to change. Right. Somewhere between here and there, a change began to take place. Isn't it just like the Lord began to reach down and make a change? Yeah. Oh, I'm telling you this great I am. He can make a change in your hands. They knew when they poured that out, they knew what they put in there. They filled that cup up. I can just imagine them sitting back to watch and see what's going to happen. Well, they've done exactly what the Lord told them to do. Amen. Even not just the filling up the pots, but also take it out. Not just take it just anywhere. Take it to the main man. Take it to him. And the Bible said when the ruler of the feast had tasted 
the water that was made wine and knew not whence it was. He didn't know, but the servants which drew the water knew. See, it doesn't. The governor of the feast called the bridegroom and said unto him, Every man at the beginning does set forth good wine, and when men have well drunk, then that which is worse. But thou hast kept the good wine until now. Well, he complimented the bridegroom, but it was the true bridegroom that had done the miracle. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. You're sitting among us this evening. Our stories of healing, stories of deliverance, miracles that have been wrought, worked in lives that are right here. Amen. Not a hundred years ago. Not folks, not I can tell from folks that's dead and gone. But things that have happened right now in our lives. Amen. That God has done. It took obedience. Amen. Somebody had to obey God to get it done. Amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Praise the Lord. Aren't you glad Amen. that somebody will pay the Lord? Amen. Now, I love the good Lord. I love the good Lord. You love him? Amen. Do you love him? Amen. 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 Lord, have mercy. Come on, Amen. Lord, have we keep it up? We're going to have touch again. Amen. Do you love him? Amen. Does he ever feel your vessel with that new wine?
this week. That's just the way that it is. Come on. Any other afflictions of the righteous? Come on. Praise the Lord. Don't mean you're done wrong because the trouble comes your way. But I tell you what, the Lord delivers them out of them all. Amen. Do you know that he delivers? Amen. So you let me go, I'll go. But right now, whatever he tells you to do. Lord of God. Praise the Lord. You remember that bill? Yeah. You remember that? Yes. You had your cakes? Yeah. Your Lord, did you take that pineapple? Yeah. That pineapple cake. And go see somebody. God bless you. When she got in there, was it was her grandson? Was with him. And Gail was seen, I thought, you know what kids don't like pineapple cake? 
But she got in there and they asked what kind it was. She said, pineapple, well, guess what? That was that little youngin's favorite thing. Yeah. With yeah, come on, Brother Jesse. That child will never forget that. Right. Man. You think God could win somebody over with a little slice of money? Yeah. Come on. Sure. Yeah. 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 Praise the Lord. Come on, Brother Jesse. Praise the Lord. Yeah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Praise the Lord. We went out of the little woman. The Lord had already instructed her to take care of him. God. He went down to the city where God sent him to. And there she was outside. She had gathered some sticks to build a fire. Yeah. 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 What are you doing? She said, All I've got is a little bit of this cruise of oil and a handful of meal. I'm going to I'm gonna take these sticks and I'm going to build us a fire. I'm going to bake us a cake, one for me and one for my son. Listen. She said, we're going to eat it and we're going to die. The old prophet looked at her. Yeah, come on, brother. He said, bake me a cake first. Yeah, give me the first. Uh, now, you listen. How bad shape she was in. We're going to eat it and we're going to die. Yeah. But the man of God, the Spirit of the Lord spoke and told her, you make me the first cake. How many women would have said, well, I can't do that. My, I've got to take care of my young Come on, preacher. I've got to take care of me and mine. I've got to take care of me and mine. Me yeah. and mine is killing the people of God. Amen. Amen. Come on, brother. Amen. Amen. So she went and she made it. Yeah. <laughs> and he ate of it. Yeah. And he said, yeah. she went and she made some more for her and the boy. They yeah. ate of it. And she went back yeah. again yeah. and again. Yeah, okay, now. And again. Yeah. 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 I think it tasted so good every time it comes up here. Huh? Mm, mama, go make me another piece of that cake. I don't believe God filled that bottle up and it's flowing overflowing. I don't believe the barrel was completely full. I believe every time. Yeah, come on, bro. Yes. Looked like there was just enough for one more. Yeah. Amen. And she'd stir it. And she'd fix it. They eat it. She did it. Her boy did it, and the prophet did it. Amen. And as long as the family was in the land, that, <laughs> that cruise of oil never ran out. Oh, and that barrel of meal never went empty. The whole time that the family, she had to do what the Lord told her to do. She had to obey Him. Praise the Lord. When we don't obey the Lord, we get in trouble. Amen. We suffer. Or we make one another suffer. Amen. Because we fail to make Amen. Praise the Lord. Whatever He tells you to do. Amen. I love the Lord. I love you. We're trying to be over here. Absolutely. This altar is always open. I thought all these years that I've been here, I hope we did many, many nights. There's never been a time I've ever said this all is closed because oh, no. I don't have the authority. Amen. As long as the Lord would strive with man or woman, let them pray. Let them pray. Those of you that are able, able bodied, stand to your feet, rest yourself a little bit, you can walk your solid, let you pray. You need help, healing, strength, and get in this altar and pray. <laughs>